Hello, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to drive this 330CI on a road trip for about 275, 300 miles uh, down to San Marcos, Texas to take it back to my son who's down in college. But I just got through uh, replacing the clutch on this car, so this is going to be the test drive. So stand by and I'll uh, show you how I took the clutch out and put a new clutch in. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, like, all that fun stuff. And uh, we'll see you later. Thanks. Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be working on this. 2004 BMW 330CI with a six-speed manual. I'm going to be uh, replacing the clutch disc and the pressure plate and the pilot bearing and a few other things. So before I go any further, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, that helps my channel grow. And uh, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumbs up anyway. Be a nice guy. So anyway, I'm going to get on with the video and we will uh, show you what we're working with here. So this is the car I'm going to be changing the clutch in. Uh, my son's going to help me. It's his car. Uh, and you've probably seen videos of people changing clutches out on E46s before. Most of the ones I see, uh, they're using a lift, that kind of thing. So we're going to do it the hard way. We're going to do it the old school way. Uh, I do have jack stands under there for all you jack stand police. Uh, we just got the hydraulic, the floor jacks on there just for a backup. And then I've got the front, uh, got the front of the car on ramps. Uh, We've tested this, it's all safe, it's all secure. Uh, so anyway, first thing we're gonna do is take off the exhaust, so we'll get straight to that. So the first step of taking the exhaust off, this is the way I do it. You've got these four bolts here at your manifold. You've got one over there, those two, and then that one. So those are all 15 millimeter. Then the next thing to do are these two that go to the transmission mount. These are 13 millimeter. There's also a nut on the back side. So. I've got my 13 millimeter socket and 13 millimeter wrench ready to go for that. There's my 15 mil socket for these bolts. And then in the back, we'll go take a look at that. Stand by. The next step would be to come to these brackets here. Uh, these bolts, each bracket has four bolts. I think one of these is broken. That was like that when I got the car, when we got the car. So this is just a... I don't know what it does. It doesn't actually bolt to the exhaust, but you still got to take it off to drop the exhaust. This one in the middle, these two bolts there, they're connected to the exhaust. I just leave those on there and I just pull the exhaust. I just pull this bracket down by itself and it'll come with the exhaust. There's really no need to unbolt these center bolts or center nuts, just the four bolts. These, t these two and the two on the other side that you can see over there, not that one, just those two. All right, so we'll go back to the back of the car where the muffler is and I'll show you what's going on back there. This is one of the isolators that holds up the muffler. So there's your exhaust tip, you come over. This is on the passenger side towards the rear or passenger side of the muffler. The muffler is actually on the driver's side of the car, but I mean, so anyway, you've got these. Uh, these are a deep, well, it's got a, got a, uh, stud that sticks out and the nut comes off. So I use a deep socket for these uh, They're 13 millimeter also. So you've got one on this side and then this side Of the muffler. It's a little trickier to see Hopefully I can get my light in there You can see that Rubber isolator right there same situation. So one on each side of the muffler and then what I usually do is get everything loose take those center brackets out leave at least one of these nuts on here and one of the ones in the front where the exhaust manifold is and then uh, with two people you can just finally take your nut off and then just drop it down real nice and easy uh, whenever i do that by myself i'll put the muffler itself on a uh let's get back here where you can see the muffler it's kind of big and it's kind of heavy uh, but i'll put it on a transmission jack or on a floor jack and then you know, set it on that and then take the front off and just lower it down like that. But anyway, I got my son here to help me. So we're gonna do it the two person way this time.
the next step is going to be to remove this uh, heat shield here that's under the exhaust or above the exhaust sorry so it's just some 10 millimeter bolts uh, this one's been thrashed right there that bolts already out pull through but uh, there's a 10 millimeter bolt there's several 10 millimeter bolts that uh, it goes back all the way to the rear end right there so I'm just going to take those out uh, this heat shield on the side right here I don't think I'm going to mess with it uh, I just need to be able to get to these two transmission mount bolts right here so I'm not really worried about that I can just hold it back like it already is right there so yeah next thing will, will be uh, to remove this heat shield and then we'll be able to see the drive shaft and uh, we'll take the drive shaft out and the center support bearing so yep stand by So now that I got that heat shield out of the way, we're looking at the drive shaft where it bolts to the rear end. So uh, those are external torques and that is an E12. And let me show you what I'm using. So it's just an external, it's like the reverse of a regular torques. That particular size is an E12. Uh, these are not expensive. I got these at Harbor Freight. You know, they're a few dollars for the set, 10, 12 bucks, something like that. So they're not, even though it's an odd tool, it's not something that's really hard to get. So anyway, so what I'm gonna do, let me get the camera turned around here so I can explain this. So what I'm gonna do is take all the ones out that I can reach and the ones on the top, I'll have my son uh, go inside the car, put it in neutral, and then I'll spin either the drive shaft or the tire to spin these around so I can get to them. And then he'll put it back in gear and set the parking brake, and that way I can break them loose like that. So for now, he's going to be up in the car doing that while I take out these bolts. And there's six of them, so we'll do that. All right, so I've got some of these broke just to kind of show you the process of why we're going to have to turn the drive shaft. So I loosened these three so I'll pull these out. There's one. three so now I've got three more of these bolts on the top side so they're gonna be I can maybe break this one loose but the other two are gonna be a little bit more difficult to get to so what I'm gonna do is have my son hey uh, get in the car and take it out of gear yeah, and uh, take the emergency brake off. <clears throat> so he's taking the car out of gear, putting it in neutral. You want the emergency brake off? Please? Off. Okay. Parking brake's off. Parking so now I can rotate this around. All right, now put it back in gear okay. and put the parking brake on. So now it's stationary, so I'll, that'll give me, so I can apply leverage to these and break these last bolts here. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So those last two bolts are broken, but I'm gonna leave them in their finger tight because I'm gonna need to rotate the drive shaft. Also, just kind of in the same manner to uh, get a lot over here for the, uh, bushing that bolts the transmission tail shaft so i'm gonna have to take these out and you know some of them are easier to get to than others so i uh i'm gonna want to rotate this too just like i did for the rear end so for now i'm gonna leave those bolts in the back connected so that we'll uh well, i don't guess it matters as long as the transmission's in gear but anyway, that's what I'm going to do it so that the we're still connected to the rear wheels and the emergency brake and all that. So, so that I can rotate this, take it out of gear, take the brake off, rotate this to uh, take these bolts out too. So, 
The next thing I'm gonna do is get this transmission mount out of the way. I'm gonna put the transmi transmission jack under the transmission and just kind of support it. We're gonna lose this and then we're gonna finish taking the drive shaft out, taking that apart and then taking out this uh, center. I don't know if you can see it or not, yeah. There's two bolts that hold the center support bearing in and then we're gonna disconnect the shifter and get that all out of the way. Once we get this all out of the way, we'll have access to that. We'll disconnect the shifter, get that all out of the way and uh, take the slave cylinder loose here and then we'll be ready to start taking out bail housing bolts, so. So I'm gonna take, get the light around here, that, that nut right there and then there's one on the other side that connects the rubber isolators that bolt to the transmission, to the transmission mount. So I'm gonna disconnect those so I can uh, actually remove this whole cross member uh, and disconnect it like that. You can take it from the transmission at the top, but I'm just gonna take the that, those bolts from the bottom and uh, then we can put the transmission jack underneath there and get that cross member, this cross member here completely out of the way so it's easier to access all this other stuff up here. All right, we've got the cross member out of the way. The next thing is going to be to take out the drive shaft flex disc, which is gonna disconnect the uh, drive shaft from the transmission. So these are 18 millimeter, uh, 18 millimeter bolts and 18 millimeter nuts. So I'll set up a time lapse. I'll take those out. And then again, I'm gonna have my kid, my son up in the car, uh, you know, changing the gears and stuff so I can rotate this around as needed. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so I got all the uh, bolts out from the the flex connector there. I'm gonna take out the two bolts that hold in the center support bearing. And then I've still got one bolt down there on the end uh, where the drive shaft goes into the rear end. So these are also 13 millimeter just nuts. I'm gonna use a deep socket here. Once these start coming out, you gotta watch out because the, the drive shaft can fall down on you. Okay, so. Might have to pry on that a little bit. So we've got the front loose, the flex joints moving. Yeah, so we'll pause it here. Let me grab a pry bar and we'll get this center support bearing, uh, center support bearing uh, out of that wedged in position there. So, all right, so I've run into a snag here. I can't get my drive shaft to come out of the rear end. I'm trying to get my light in there. There's a groove in there where you're supposed to be able to get a screwdriver in there, but man, it is. Not coming. I've pried on with a big pry bar, but I've got some WD-40 sprayed in there now. Hopefully that'll, I'll let it soak probably overnight. I'm just going to keep moving forward forward with uh, trying to get the rest of the transmission out here uh, at the front. Okay, the next thing I want to do is get all this shifter linkage, get all this out of the way. So uh, I'm going to pull this clip off here and then we will... Slide this clip off, that'll come out. Same thing on the other end over there. I'm trying to get up in here. This is hard to film up in there. And then we're gonna get our uh, shifter rod out of the way. And then there's a clip. I don't know if I can get the camera in there. Uh, well, 
light just fell in my face. So there's a clip here that we're gonna fold forward and then uh, that will release. There's a pin that goes through that holds this. I really would like to get that filmed for you. So right there, this clip will slide off and then you can take out this pin that goes through. Uh, I, I can't, I can't get to the pin. You can, you can kind of see it up there. But that'll allow us to take this. We'll take the knob off from the top and it'll allow us to take this whole shifter assembly, slide it forward out of this bushing. Or we might be able to just pry it down out of that. And then we can get all of this out of the way so that's no longer uh, connected to the transmission. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take the slave cylinder. I've got the shifter linkage off all over there on the ground. It's just a bunch of little fiddly bits that you gotta get out of there. I'll, I'll explain all that later uh, once it's all taken apart. So there's two bolts here <clears throat> on the slave cylinder. There's a nut and then there's a nut on the top. I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, there's, there's the bottom one. So that way is towards the rear of the car course the opposite way is towards the front where this flex hose is towards the front I'm laying under the driver's side this is on the driver's side uh, of the car so I'll take that off and I'm probably not going to be able to film that because it's just hard filming it looking at it so I, I doubt I'll be able to uh, film it while I'm taking those bolts off but anyway that's the next step one important thing I left off is uh, this plate, this reinforcement plate, it's aluminum. It's under the uh, under the engine. You got to take this off. Uh, it's 16 millimeters. Uh, these have little rubber uh, plugs in them. There's eight of them. There's four at the front, and there's two on each side in the back. Uh, this hole, there's a hole under here. Uh, this side was damaged uh, where somebody bottomed out the car, and uh, that one was a bear to get out, so I'm going to have to straighten that one up. Uh, before I put it back on the car, but you got to take that off and let me show you why so once I got the slave uh, cylinder pulled out the um, I took that uh, Reinforcement plate that I just showed you off the bottom uh, You need to take that off because you have to get to this little bolt right here. It's a uh, 10 millimeter head But it's just it's a little tab that holds uh, your oxygen sensor wires where they come down beside the transmission uh, and this bolt, this little bolt here, there's an there's a plate between the transmission and the engine block, and uh, that plate actually fits in between here. So let me take this off. <clears throat> so you've got your transmission, and then that plate fits on, and then this screws to the back side of that plate. So if you don't take this off. You can't separate the transmission from that plate, which the plate is behind the flywheel. So you have to take this off. It's real hard to see when it's up under there, uh, especially if you're doing it like this on jack stands uh, like I am. So that's that. That's that bolt there. That's really important to pay attention to. Uh, I'll screw that in later. So here's your bell housing bolts. So these two right here are for your starter. Uh, they're E12s, the external Torx 12s, and then you've got uh, this one, this one, a big one on the bottom, one on the side here. These are all external Torx 14. It's really, it was really hard to film this. My son had to go back to college uh, out of town, so uh, I did all this myself, and it's hard to get up in there and film this, taking these out. But when you're looking from the, I'll show you a view from the back of the transmission. And then you've got these three ones on the bottom that are external Torx 10. Uh, they are in there very, very tight. So, uh, man, I had to put a breaker bar on them, on these big ones, and uh, give it all I had. I, I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get them loose, but I did. Uh, so, that's that. Uh, let me see if I can think of something else right now. That's pretty much it. They're really hard to get to. Uh, these ones on the top, this top one right here is super hard to get to. Uh, the starter bolts are equally difficult to get to. And I'll show you what I did to remedy that. 
So what I had to do was, I'm sure this can be done another way. This is how I did it because I could get to the starter bolts from the back, which are down here. They go in that hole and there's another hole over here that the starter bolts do. And then there's a dowel on the bell housing that, that, that uh, one of these holes slips into. Uh, the problem is um, after I took those out, I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to get that starter back on. Um, from underneath to get those bolts started. It's really difficult to get to those bolts and uh, to make sure that, I mean, the starter is going to fall off when you pull the transmission off. So there's there's really, I don't see any other way to do it. Um, maybe other people know how. I don't for the purposes of this video. Uh, I just thought it'd make it a lot easier on me. Uh, taking this intake manifold off isn't that difficult. Probably took 30 minutes. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, the only problem is when you do that, if you go about it this method, this gasket here that's uh, on the intake, those are one-time use gaskets. Uh, so I did have to buy another gasket. I ordered that from O'Reilly's. And it's not cheap, it's like 55 bucks. So anyway, but that's gonna let me put that starter back on a lot easier. And also the top bolt, <laughs> Uh, of the bell housing let me show you let me go back over here this top bolt here was uh man I, I i couldn't even see it so what i i wound up doing was i put the ratchet with a lot of extensions on it and i reached up uh, from underneath the car and then i had my wife stand on this little stool here and guide the uh E14 external Torx 14 socket onto the bolt and the bolt goes into this ear right here. So to get that from the bottom, it's going to be really super difficult. Uh, like I said, taking this intake off and all that really didn't take that long. Uh, I didn't want to do a video on that. There's a lot of other videos on YouTube of guys doing that that probably could have did a better job than me or did do a better job than I could have. Uh, the one I recommend is uh, the guy Shop Life that's always working on BMWs. Shop Life, uh, he's got a really good video. Matter of fact, I watched his video on how to take this intake off. So, but he's doing his he does his transmission work, you know, with a lift and all that. So I wanted to show, uh, you know, what it's going to be like if you, if you got to do it on the floor in the garage on jack stands like I'm doing. So anyway, that's that. And uh, another thing, let me go back over here. On these bolts some of these are different lengths uh, you can see this one on the side here you can see that I'm trying to get so this boss is really wide right there where that goes in that's a starter bolt and then this one is thin so this dimension versus this dimension so once you get your bolts out and you got your transmission set sitting here on the ground like this uh, I'm gonna label these and that way, when I'm under the car, I know exactly where they go. I'm not putting the wrong bolt in the wrong hole because it's really frustrating and, and it's really hard to get to. I uh, almost said some cuss words on the video, uh, which I don't like doing. And so that's that. But anyway, I'll uh, get under the car and we'll take the clutch out and get the pilot bearing out. So here's the pressure plate. Uh, there's six, uh, six millimeter Allen head bolts that go in here. I just used a regular Allen wrench uh, and I just reached up with a gloved hand and held the flywheel while I turned the bolts. I got them all broke loose. So uh, that's that. And so these just come out. Like that. Let me get it in the camera there. So that's what the bolt looks like. Six millimeter Allen head. So I'm gonna take those six bolts out and uh, pull the pressure plate off. Here are the flywheel bolts that I took out. Uh, most E46s, I believe they have a 19 millimeter uh, hex. These uh, 04 to 06 E46s, uh, for some reason, they changed over to the star bit. 
Uh, it is a T60. I don't know if I can get that. Right there, you can see. It's a T60. So I didn't have one of these. I had to run to my local rallies to get them. Uh, I had to use the uh, my air impact to get these out. They're really in there. <clears throat> they torque back in to 100 newton meters or uh, 75 or 74 foot pounds. I don't have a metric uh, torque wrench, so we're going to go with 74 foot pounds. So I'm going to have to use a little metal bar. Uh, I'll show you that when I get to that to uh, get these torqued in to hold the flywheel. So uh, you can see on this bolt the little white stuff in there. That's uh, Loctite that's left over from the original Loctite. Uh, so I'm going to use a pick and clean all that out and get these bolts nice and clean. Ordinarily, you would want to use uh, brand new bolts. I suggest that. I'm not going to. Um, I'm just not. I mean, I don't feel that new bolts are going to make that big of a difference to me for this car. It's not a race car or anything like that. So I'm going to use a blue Loctite when I put these back in. But I'm going to clean all this up, uh, clean these bolts up really well and uh, with brake cleaner and get all that old Loctite out of there. So... <clears throat> in the flywheel, or sorry, in the back of the crank itself where these bolts uh, screw in, uh, I'm going to use this thread chaser here. I didn't have one of these. I've got a bunch of different taps, but I didn't have this particular size. Uh, this is a 12 by 1.5 uh, metric tap or thread chaser. So I had to run to, uh, as you can see, the local Napa and uh, pick one of these up. So I'm going to chase the holes on the crankshaft and get all the old Loctite out of there. So I've got a good surface for the uh, new Loctite and the cleaned up bolts to bond to. So I'm gonna do that and uh, then we'll uh, go to the flywheel and we'll talk about the flywheel. Here's the uh, flywheel. Uh, ordinarily, a sane person would change this out. Uh, this one's actually, it looks worse than it on the camera than it does in person. But you can actually, I don't know if you can, you can actually see the uh, grooves. It doesn't have any, uh, I mean, it looks like it's got some hot spots on it. But there's no gouging or anything. The other disc didn't go all the way through. Uh, what I wanted to show you is this uh, pilot bearing. Now, this is the part that's listed everywhere that I look for this thing. Is this 102cc pilot bearing, which would normally go into your the end of your crankshaft. However, this flywheel, it's a uh, LUK. I don't know if this is the original flywheel or not but it has a pilot bearing built into it and it's different obviously than this one. So I checked it out, stuck my finger in there. It looks pretty good. Uh, like I said, we're not building a race car. Normally, yes, the right thing to do would be to replace all of this. However, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just a guy in my garage working on this. So, uh, I hit the, uh, this surface here was my DA sander with some tw uh, 220 grit and uh, cleaned it up with some brake clean. Once I get it in the car, I'm going to uh, probably clean it off with some alcohol. But yeah, so I'm going back in with that and uh, I got my bolts all cleaned up. Obviously, I got the, uh, the holes in the crankshaft, the threaded, the threaded holes in the crankshaft are uh, cleaned out. So uh, yeah, we're just going with that and... Uh, Hopefully it'll work out. I'm sure it will. Before I put the flywheel back on, I just wanted to point out uh, this hole right here is a little bit bigger. I'll show you with the dial calipers. calipers. So it's kind of hard to do this with. So there we're. 0.572-ish of an inch. And then these other holes. Get that right there. 
They're about 0.55 of an inch. So on the crankshaft, there is a, uh, a little indexing sleeve where the bolt, one of the bolt holes is. I don't know if you noticed that uh, earlier, but so when you're looking at it from the other side on this particular flywheel, that hole that's bigger is this one that's kind of got this teardrop shape. So when you're putting it on, you know, you're going to be looking at this side. That's how you can index which one goes onto that sleeve. So just thought I'd throw that in right quick. Okay, I'm not going to be able to record this while I'm doing it. So I'm just going to show you what I've got going on. So I've got this bar sitting on that jack stand over there. And it's just a tire iron. Uh, you can get them at Harbor Freight for like six, seven bucks. So I just drilled a couple holes in it. Uh, use a little bit longer bolts uh, than the ones that hold the pressure plate on to hold that in place. And then that way, I've just got one bolt in here. That way, when I'm tightening this to the right, tightening these bolts, in order to be able to get torque on them, the flywheel is going to want to turn. So it's not going to be able to turn because it's over here sitting on that jack stand with that bar. So uh, that's how I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to film this because I'm scared I might knock the camera over or something. But anyway, we'll come back once I get them all tight. So I've got the flywheel in. I'm ready to put the uh, pressure plate and the clutch disc in. So there's nothing on this that indicates which side goes where. But this word right here, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but... Uh, whenever you put that into, I had a hunch it was German, whenever you put it into uh, translate on the iPhone from German to English, that word means transmission side. So whenever we put this in, this side here will face the rear of the car and uh, the other side will be on the uh, flywheel. So there you go, a little German lesson for you. Okay, before I go any further, I wanted to explain uh, this tool here. So this is a universal uh, pilot or a clutch disc alignment tool. So the it's a metric one. It came with metric sizes, but none of them exactly fit into my pilot bearing. So I just took the closest one that was a little bit bigger, uh, chucked this up in the drill. You can see where it was in the drill down there. And spun it in the drill and just used sandpaper to, to slowly shave it down but still maintain that shoulder on there so when it slid into the pilot bearing it would stop so what you would have is on your transmission let's say your flywheel's right here behind that so you slide this into your pilot bearing it'll shoulder out on that and then this collar here was too long it's a tapered cone it's got different sizes on the other end it was too long so i had to cut it modify it so once you have that in your pilot bearing you slide that in with your clutch disc and then it it fits into your splines it's a cone it's not a i mean it's a pretty tight fit and i even uh, tapped it in with a hammer when i put the one on the car in there i tapped it in with a hammer and then, just to make sure it was super tight and then whenever i got the pressure plate set in there I just pulled it out like that and it came out no problem so you would have that and then what you would be looking at under the car is i might have to set let me set the camera down just one second there we go so you would have your pressure plate sitting there that you're bolting up you've got all this aligned now, I already took this plate off. I didn't record me taking it off of the one that's in the car, but hopefully this will make sense when I show it to you. So this, when you get your new pressure plate and everything, see these, see these fingers here? They're locked in. You don't want to unlock this until you've got everything put together because if you do that with these self-adjusting clutches, if you release that and it's not on the car, that plate's going to go all the way down. Your springs are going to come all the way down here, these springs, and, and that's done. You're, 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 it's ruined, to, to my knowledge. Uh, you can't use it. Uh, you have to have all this in the car 
as if the flywheel, like I said, is right here behind it. Everything's bolted in. You've got all your, your six bolts holding that in. I did put new ones in on this. And then once everything's good and your clutch is aligned and your alignment tool, everything, you're happy with that, uh, then you can take with this tool, the, the, the good tools that are made for this, the 22 spline uh, inch and one eighth uh, tool that's made specifically for this clutch has a little screw in it. So it fits through this hole and you're able to unscrew it, take it out, and then you can put a, uh, this is like a 9 16 uh, hex right here. I don't know what the metric equ equivalent is. But anyway, then you would take something and stick in there a big uh, uh, hex key or whatever, and you would turn this because this, you would take that screw out and then this hex, hex portion would be, uh, you know, exposed. But since I had to use this type of tool, if you'll notice here, there is a little uh, raised portion there. So when it was in the car and it was tightened in there, once I had everything aligned, all the bolts were tightened, everything's good to go. Now I'm ready to release this uh, because I can't take this out because that hole's too small with the way I did it. So I took a punch and I put it on that little uh, piece that's sticking up right there and I tapped it, tapped it, tapped it with the punch. It spun counterclockwise, released, boom, the, the springs popped out, the plate fell off, and then I was able to, this is what I was looking at, then I was able to just pull that out like that, and then my clutch is set on the flywheel in there. So I hope that explains everything. I know that was kind of long, but anyway, we'll uh, move over to the bell housing now. I've got the pressure plate bolted in uh, with the clutch disc in there. And then uh, there's a little disc in there that you release once you get it all bolted in and you're sure your clutch disc is aligned. Uh, there's a little disc that you pop out of there. Uh, so yeah, just do that. And then, sorry, struggling here. I've got this alignment tool that I had to modify. Uh, I couldn't find the correct alignment tool for this clutch. It didn't come with one. I've never seen one that didn't come with one. So, but anyway, I bought this universal kit and I had to do some modification to it. But whenever you buy this clutch kit, make sure that you either buy the alignment tool or you can get one or it comes with one because for whatever reason, the one for this kit is impossible to find right now. Uh, I guess they're not shipping them from Germany due to the uh, COVID and all that. So, yeah. Anyway, that's what I had to do. So, but it's all bolted up, everything's lined up, torqued down, no problems. And uh, I'll show you that plate, and then I'll show you the what we gotta do to the bell housing before we put it all back together. So the pressure plate is in. Next thing we gotta do is get this bell housing or the transmission ready to stab. Uh, this is the pivot for the uh, arm that actuates your uh, throw out bearing that then pushes in your clutch. This is the factory one. It's plastic. Uh, I would recommend replacing this. I bought a brass one. It's kind of an upgrade. It just caught, it's like five, six bucks. It's not a big deal. Uh, this one really doesn't look too bad. But anyway, I'm going to put this one in. So that hole right there, you can just take a punch, punch it out from the back and it pops right out. Uh, mine came out really easy. So we will I'm going to tap that in with a rubber mallet or something something so kind of soft. So then once we do that, there's this spring. So see that round part. Now we're going to look at the old one, but the new one has that too. There's that little groove right there. So this spring will go over that. You, you squish it together and it, and, it, and it expands that. So that'll sit in that groove on the brass one that I just installed. And then that spring wraps around this arm. When you take this apart, it'll make sense. Spring wraps around that arm. 
It's going to be like that. That's going to sit against the pivot pin. And then your throw out bearing or clutch release bearing here. Here's our new one. We'll slide on. So it's got two flat spots on it. And you want the flat spots facing top and bottom. And that slides into your, uh, your, your, sorry, your clutch arm there. So let me show you here. So you've got these two little flat spots. It slides in just like that. That's what holds it in. And then the other side, as you can see, this is where our slave cylinder comes through. So I'm going to put all this together, and then we're going to be ready to stab the transmission. So just taking a moment here for a little victory celebration. I got the uh, transmission stabbed and bolted up, no problem. Just took a little bit of wrestling. Uh, it wasn't too, too bad. But anyway, got all the bolts back in. Obviously, I don't have the cross member on. Uh, but so the next step will be to uh, get the starter bolted up from the top and uh, try to hold this steady here. Get the shifter linkage up here all put back together. So basically just everything I did uh, previously in reverse. And then I think that's about all I'll uh, video for now. And then uh, we'll take you for a test drive once I got it all put back together. And uh, now would be a good time to subscribe. So hit the subscribe button. Thanks. So that's going to be it for this video. I know that probably wasn't the most detailed video on uh, doing a transmission in a BMW or an E46 in particular. But um, and it gives you a general idea. It's A lot of that's hard to film uh, when you're underneath the car on jack stands. So just keep that in mind. Uh, gives you a general idea of, of the things you need to do. Uh, one of the really important things is uh, that clutch alignment tool that I didn't have. So I had to, you know, make a tool out of another tool. So, but it all worked out fine. And uh, just keep that in mind. Make sure you get all your parts together uh, that you're gonna need, or make sure that your clutch kit comes with that tool. So. Anyway, that's going to be it for now. Uh, I did drive the car. Uh, I took it down to my son, uh, who's at college right now, and uh, it was about 280 miles, and then I drove the car about 10 miles the day before. So, drove down there, no problem. I called him uh, that evening after he got off of work, and uh, he said that, man, it was driving a lot better, shifted really smooth, everything seemed really good with it. So, I'm happy with that. So, uh, subscribe to the channel, please, and uh, so I can make more videos and keep me motivated to make more videos. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.